When you think about the big cloud database providers, Google BigQuery is definitely a major player and one that you should be familiar with as a data engineer. Now, when you're first getting started with BigQuery, some of the terminology and the layout and some of the things are a little bit different compared to its competitors. But in today's video, I wanna walk you through step-by-step -step how to get started with BigQuery. We'll review some of these key terminologies. And then by the end of this, you'll feel comfortable with the layout of BigQuery with the concepts, and you can decide if this is something that you wanna learn more about, or if this is a tool that you wanna implement on your own. So here we are on the Google Cloud console, and to get to BigQuery, you can either go to the sidebar here and go to BigQuery, or right in the middle, we can select BigQuery, so that's what I'll do. And one thing to point out about Google Cloud is the structure, it goes from an organization down to a folder and down to a project. So to make things clean and what you would typically do is to create a new project that's gonna hold all of your data-related resources. So over to the right here, I'm gonna create new project. The first thing we need to do is give it a project name, and it needs to be globally unique. And down down here, you can see what it's actually going to be. And we can see if we just put test in here, it gives test, but then some numbers. And in terms of the database, because we're talking about databases here, this is going to be the equivalent of a database in BigQuery. And we're going to see that, but keep that in mind when you give your project a name. So in this case, I'm going to give a name that's hopefully globally unique, KDS YouTube. And I can see, yes, this is available. So nobody else in the world has ever done this. So we'll do KDS YouTube. Next, you'll select your billing account that you have on file. And you can either do no organization or tie it to something that you already have built in Google Cloud. And it does the location in terms of the parent organization or folder create. Okay, so it just created our project. Here we can see we're in KDS YouTube. And this is what I was saying. It kind of looked like a database and it's going to function that way. And this is how we're going to start creating objects within it. So one of the things right away you're going to notice with BigQuery is that the terminology is different. We have first a project that's essentially the equivalent of a database. And if you click on this, the option it gives you is create data set. Data set is the equivalent of a schema. Think of it like that. You're grouping it into logical buckets. So what we'll do is create a data set. And again, it's similar to the project ID. You need to give it an ID. And so let's just call this demo data. You can only have underscores. You can't have the dashes. Data location is physically where in the world do you want this to live? I'll just select US. You can set some other options here, but we're just gonna go ahead and create a data set. So now over here underneath, we see demo data. Now let's create a table. Within here, we can do create table. Now to create this table, this wizard is gonna show up and you're either going to be able to just create an empty table, just you know nothing in it, or you can upload from various spots. And so maybe you have information living in different blob storages, or you wanna upload something from your drive. I'm gonna upload this orders CSV. It already identifies the file format as CSV, but you have other options, destination, project, data set. Now what's the name of the table? I'll just call this orders. Table type, that's our only option. It can auto detect the schema, assuming everything is good to go. And then down here we have partition and cluster settings. And I wanna stop on this just for a second because these are two really important concepts in general, but particularly with BigQuery. So the first thing here is partitioning. And partitioning is essentially gonna allow you to group your data into different buckets based on a certain column. So in this case, maybe by ingestion time. So if you're constantly loading something you know, once a day, there'd be a partition for every single day. And the value of that is it makes your queries much more efficient if you're constantly trying to filter on certain types of data or certain columns. And clustering is going to essentially organize your data under the hood into more optimal blocks of data. Let's say you have certain attributes that are always queried, maybe it's a status. You can cluster your whole table that way so that when you're constantly filtering and querying by that, it's going to be much faster. And like I mentioned, this is really helpful for cost reduction because in BigQuery, the default setting and the most common way to get billed is based on bytes scanned. So it's how much data you or reading and scanning with each query. And if you have proper partitioning and clustering in place, you can reduce the amount of bytes that are required to scan and therefore reduces your cost. Last, there's a couple advanced options. The only one I'm going to do here is skip the first row because I know there's a header there. And let's now go through and create this table. And here it is. So now we have one table called orders. And if you click on it here, you'll see what this looks like. So you bring it up right away. It's going to give you the schema with some information about it, the details about the table, the size, number of rows when it was created, things like that. It also allows you to preview so you can right away see what the data looks like along with some other options here. So let's say we wanted to query this table. You could either open up a new blank editor and go from there or start to query right from here. And it can say in a new tab. So that would open up a new editor with this already in place for you. Another cool thing about BigQuery is you can do it in a split tab. So you can have multiple tabs within here and have this right next to it and start to query it right away. Another thing you can do here from this view is if you go back to the schema, if you click on one of 
these. It says add to query in split tab. So if you have this open, you can add this here and it'll add it in there for you. So obviously we're here to query data. So let's see what this would look like. I'm going to paste something in here that I already have. So let's run this query and right away we're able to see data. Now I want to stop here for a second and point out something that is really critical to this whole architecture and that you may not have even have noticed. And that's the fact that we've been able to set this up, add objects, run queries, and we didn't do any administrative work here. And that's what's known as serverless computing, the serverless database. All of the administration, the scaling, everything is hidden behind the scenes within BigQuery. So if you think about it compared to Snowflake, you do select your different warehouse sizes, and that will kind of determine the amount of resources that are available for your query. And obviously you can auto scale that, but I'm just pointing out the difference between that and something like this, where there's no option for that here. It just auto scales behind the scenes for you. Now, a couple other features here on BigQuery. If you select Save Query, what this will do is give you the option to save it. So you can give this a name and visibility can be either for you or for the whole project, for the entire public, up to you. And if you save this, now you'll get this option over here for saved queries. And anytime you click this, it'll pop open for you and you can run it, which is really nice because you know a lot of times you have one-off queries that you wanna use and that's one way to organize it and constantly get back to it. Now, another thing you can do here is save this as a view. We have our project, we're gonna do the demo data a data set. While it says table here, technically it's a view. So we'll call this orders view and save. Now, if you look over here, we have orders and orders view and the icon is slightly different. And this is when you know it's a view. This is a table. And if we click on it, it's giving us a similar but slightly different view. We have the schema information and details, but this time it has the query within it. And one thing I'll point out here that's a little frustrating that I hope they maybe change at some point, or maybe there's another way to do this that I just don't know about is you can't easily preview a view. I know in other tools you can do that. For example, you know, you go back to the table, you can quickly see it. You can't do that for a view as far as I know in BigQuery. But again, somebody please correct me if there's another way to do that. But either way, that's now there. We could select all from the orders view and it should work as we expect. Now let's take a little further look about what we have down here in the query results. Obviously, we have our just tabular view of what's going on. The job information stores everything that was happening, the bytes process, the bytes build, stuff like that. Again, that's what's going to determine your costs. They also have the option for JSON view, which I I actually find kind of helpful sometimes depending on the view of your data it's going to break everything down as json so you can see things and kind of how that looks execution details also going to break down exactly where the work was happening and how many records were read written also down here if we look at this bottom part we have query history so you can see your personal history click on this and see you know what queries you ran and kind of what happened there as well as the project history. So if you have permissions to see everybody's, you could see it here and not, you know, obviously not just your own, but other people on your team. And speaking of the results, another thing that's kind of interesting with BigQuery is it seems like they have a focus on this JSON and being kind of a dynamic view here is that if you have an array or in a list of objects, it's going to create it as separate rows here. Let me see if I can show you what this looks like. I'm going to write it like this so that it should recognize it as a list. Now, if we run this, here's what I'm talking about. It breaks it up into its own row. So maybe you have some objects that have a list of two, records for one or five for another, it'll break it down for the number of objects in the list. The last thing I want to touch on here is a big one, and that's BigQuery pricing. And like a lot of the other cloud providers, it's broken down into two main components. You have computation and storage. The vast majority of your cost is going to come from the computational part of things. And there's two pricing models that are offered. You have on-demand and flat rate. On-demand is based on the number of bytes processed for each query. So that's where it makes sense to try to optimize that as much as you can with partitions and clusters. But also note that the first terabyte of query data process per month is free. So if you have a fairly small data set, this isn't going to be very expensive. Obviously, if you have a big enterprise type of thing, you know, you're going to pay. But if you're just a small company with not that much data and not that many queries that you're running, you might be able to get kind of far with this. Now, assuming you go over the first terabyte, it will be $5 per additional terabyte. So I think it's pretty transparent in terms of what you're going to pay for. And the other option is flat rate pricing, which is available for high volume customers that prefer a stable monthly cost and you're essentially pre-paying for a certain commitment. But here is the breakdown of what that looks like. Hopefully now you have a better understanding of BigQuery, can kind of compare and contrast it to the other options out there and can feel comfortable hopping in on a project that works with it. Thanks as always for watching and I'll see you next week.